<laughs> okay, so um, um, thank you everybody for coming um, from around the world. Um, it's awesome that you guys get to join us and kind of uh, uh, listen to our uh, sort of uh, conversations about like being Filipino uh, American and Filipino in the animation industry. So we really appreciate um, uh, your presence and, and hopefully this is um, <laughs> for everybody whether they're Filipino, whether they're Filipino American, or just kind of like someone that's trying to break in the industry, we're trying to break through to all you guys, and this is for everybody. So um, I just wanted to really quickly introduce uh, my co-moderator, uh, John Aquino, and uh, John, the bottom right. Also, I'm not sure if you're in your uh, like the nothing, but like bottom right. Um, John Aquino has been a modeler on such films as Tangled, Tangled, uh, Frozen, you guys have heard of Frozen, uh, mm -hmm. Big Hero 6, Moana, and was most recently the uh, director of a Disney short circuit film called Lightning in a Bottle, mm -hmm. which I, I highly recommend you guys checking out. It's on Disney Plus now. Check it out. <laughs> you directed that stuff, man. Thank you, Bobby, for my intro and stuff. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, it's such an honor to be in such a uh, great company. Um, and nonetheless, you know, Bobby Montillas, who's been an animator and a designer on films such as Wreck-It Ralph, uh, Zootopia, and Moana, and even the Tangled TV series. And, you know, it's, we're in the presence of an Oscar-nominated direct co-director of One Small Step. <laughs> <laughs> One Small Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry if that was too loud. I need to check my mic levels. Uh, <laughs> now we're loud, man. We're Filipino. Yo, yeah. yo, yo, yo. <laughs> now it's gonna for be real. for the rest of yeah. the day. Uh, so I wanted to introduce you guys to our panelists. Um, thank you, thank you, everybody, for coming, Ian, Bobby, and Josie. Um, so I'll start out with Ian, um, a dude that I've known um, since I came out here in LA. Um, mm -hmm. Ian has been a surfboard artist on Despicable Me, Trolls. Abominable, I didn't even know that. Um, Spies and Guys. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, no, I loved it. Yeah, Blue Sky, you loved the experience. Um, uh, Spies in Disguise, to name a few, and is currently a director at Netflix Animation. Woo! Yeah. Woohoo! Thanks for so, having me, guys. <laughs> Josie Trinidad, our queen, has been a story artist and head of story on Princess and the Frog. I love that movie. Tangled, I also mm -hmm. love that movie. Wreck-It mm -hmm. Ralph, Zootopia, uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2, and is currently a director in development at Walt Disney Animation Studios. Well done. Ooh. And uh, like the Beyonce of, uh, <laughs> like oh, yes. Beyonce no. of like a no. Filipino animation director. <laughs> in You've done everything in your art. <laughs> Um, Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Was that too much of uh, the Beyonce? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Beyonce Philippines. Yeah. And Philippines. Might as well right out there. Yes. Yeah, Beyonce's on the Beyonce. Now, so she can back it up. Uh, oh, she said, <laughs> yep, that's perfect in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. That's not in jest. I mean, I, I, I love Jesse and she's one of the nicest, most talented people I've ever met in my life. So um, we're lucky to have you on. Um, Aw, thank you, Bobby P and Bobby R. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm, it's you don't honor. know who to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so lastly, Bobby Rubio has been in storyboard artist on Avatar. What the heck? Whoa. Oh, nice. <laughs> like. 50 years ago, um, and then uh, <laughs> awesome. I'm just kidding. 50 years ago, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 made a resurgence in uh, Avatar. In it's all the Avatar people. Avatar, mm -hmm. uh, the Airbender, not not the Blue Airbender. Movie. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Not the live action one. <laughs> yeah, no, no. James Cameron. Oh one. yeah, yeah. Bobby directed the la the the live action Avatar that everyone. <laughs> Don't start that. Don't start that. <laughs> We just lost some viewers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Seems what happens all the time when you bring up Avatar. It's like that's all you drop the mic. It's like Avatar. All right, okay. No, real ones. Real real ones say Airbender. Real ones say Airbender. Oh, right. there you go. <laughs> anyway, that was the first. Anyway, 
Uh, mm. Bobby Rubio directed the live action Avatar, but also <laughs> was a storyboard artist on uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, um, Brave, Inside Out, and The Incredibles 2, which he was nominated for an Emmy Award, which is Woo. I saw you there. You sat behind mm. me. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. He high fived a little bit. And then, uh, and then uh, after, in addition to that, Bobby uh, Rubio wrote and directed the Pixar short film Float. Um, which is on Disney film, uh, Disney uh, Plus now, Disney Plus. Um, and it's it it, it features um, Pixar's first Filipino characters ever, which is yeah, bananas, which is nuts. Um, represent, thank you, represent, man. Woo. <laughs> so I mean, like we, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I remember uh, seeing Float for the first time when Disney, I think the first day Disney Plus went live, and all of the Pixar short circuit, uh, Pixar shorts. Short, spark shorts. Spark shorts, shorts. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ours is the spark Disney. shorts. Sorry, Disney. Uh, yeah, Pixar shorts, um, spark shorts went live and um, I watched, uh, the first thing I did was watch Bobby's um, short film uh, Float. And uh, he had like some, a, a few shots of like a young Filipino kid with that rice bowl haircut <laughs> swinging through the um, swings. And I was like, oh, that was me. Oh, that looked exactly like <laughs> that was all of like when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that rice water haircut. I, I I'm gonna bring it back like next <clears throat> next tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it, it it it's amazing to have you guys all here. Uh, thank you for coming, and it really means a lot to me, myself, and 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 uh, Rise Up Animation for sure. And I'm sure the uh, Filipino. Filipino and Filipino American um, like animation community. So um, um, thank you, thank you guys for joining us for this panel tonight. Thanks for having us, man. This is yeah, so cool. This, this is this is so cool. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, right. To like look around and see this representation of Philippine Filipinx creatives. It's 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 uh, it's an, truly an honor. And thank you, Bobby and Rise Up Animation for, for mm -hmm. setting this up. Uh, amazing. Man. I think it's um, it's great that uh, of all the diversity that's going on right now in uh, in animated films, uh, <coughs> that we as a community are starting to get a voice in that in that animation community as well. Uh, we, of course, we salute our African American you know uh, cultures as well as you know our Latino heritage and stuff like that. Uh, you know. And it's just great to be part of the conversation to be to be represented, you know, um, representing the Filipino you know community and stuff. So it's quite an honor to be in the presence of, uh, you know, directors and and you know just Filipino artists who I admire and and uh, you know look up to because um, it's uh, it, it's kind of great that we are in this time in this space where our work is being recognized you know um our work first and then you know our culture second and stuff and i think that broadening that uh platform even more uh would only give uh you know our audience and you know even you know our studios and executives uh, a glimpse of what our culture is like and uh, i think this is great that we're all doing this <laughs> yeah that's awesome, John. Yeah, thanks so much, man. Um, uh, so let's get into it. What do you guys think? Yeah, yes. let's do it. Let's go. Hey. Uh, so, so the uh, uh, so for the panelists, um, I uh, just kind of wanted to throw it out there to everybody. Um, let's talk about um, the beginnings, man. And uh, without getting into just kind of like, uh, you know, I was born. Yeah, I was born. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I'm really curious. I always ask people this: of like, where did you guys grow up? How, how, where did you guys all grow up? And what was your family, and sort of the environment that you grew up like? What was that like? Ian, what do you think? Uh, so I grew up in um, in Long Beach. <clears throat> uh, I grew up in Lakewood, uh, and I think I was I was drawing from a super young age. I had a, a cousin that lived really close by just a few houses down um Gennard Soriano actually if he's out there 
and he's he's still working now. He's on the call. He's on the call. Yeah. yeah. He, um, I mean, uh, he turned his garage into a comic book studio for his friend. Eric Canetti was kind of part of that group, and oh. um, and I met I I met all those people when I was like five or six. Um, and I would always bring my drawings over there and, you know, show them like, oh, I stippled an alien today or something like that. Um, and then I moved to Orange County uh, for middle school and high school. Very, um, it was a kind of a culture shock kind of going from Lakewood to Huntington where I, I like didn't, I, I didn't really have many friends of color when I moved. Um, but I was still like the art person and I was kind of still drawing through school and um, never that good academically but I always wanted to be a comic book artist or do something with art um and then yeah I feel like I'm I'm skipping a lot of chapters but basically like I my, my cousin was the one to let me know about art center and and was like you should maybe get a portfolio together I, I'd never heard these you know what a portfolio was I didn't understand like oh my loose leaf drawings and I was like no you have to show that you you know did figure drawing when I was like live nude figure drawing when I was like 15, 16. It was really strange. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. And then, so now here, here I am. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Josie, what do you think? Um, so I, my parents were born in the Philippines, obviously. My mom is from um, Kanlubang Laguna and my dad is from San Juan, Manila. And they immigrated in like the 50, the sixties. Um, so I was born in Oxnard, California, which is in Ventura County. Um, and I grew up in a very small kind of farm town. Um, and my mom's brothers lived in Camarillo. So we had about 25 people, but then my dad's family was also in Los Angeles. <laughs> so of course, you know, Filipinos <laughs> roam all over California. So I grew up on the West coast and I had a very idyllic, childhood my mom and dad um were very supportive of the arts they kind of thought it was a nice hobby and so uh they you know took me to drawing classes and that sort of thing i was i am a, a real nerd so i got <laughs> good grades um but it was also if i got good grades it was so that i could then it would be okay to draw was sort of my logic so as long as my i got good grades my mom and dad were like okay then you can take this saturday drawing class was how i sort of um squeaked my way into the arts um right 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 yeah yeah, yeah. but that's uh, that's sort of my story yeah, yeah. Wow. actually responding to this comment here that's true filipino parents always think drawing is a hobby that is so <laughs> true it's just like, oh, that's great, but when are you gonna, you know, be a lawyer or whatever? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's Ronnie. Yeah, I'm gonna be a doctor, or a lawyer. Which is it? <laughs> oh wait, that was Ronnie. Oh my God, yeah, Ronnie. What's up, Ronnie? Jesus, the the, the Jesus has stepped in. <laughs> oh my God, the Ronnie Del Carmen of. Uh, uh, yeah, the Ronnie Del Carmen of. <laughs> the Ronnie Del Carmen of. Ronnie Del Carmen of the Ronnie, Ronnie Del Carmen Carmen of Filipinos. <laughs> <laughs> uh bobs what do you think okay so we're talking about growing oh, up talking about like how you how you grew up what your family okay. was like your environment in san diego yeah in san diego so uh my mom is from manila and my dad is from a locos norte yeah oh. <laughs> my, <mom's> like, <laughs> my grandmother was from me <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so uh born and raised in san diego uh, Paradise Hills, uh, shout out to PH, uh, and it was very diverse growing up, uh, mainly Filipinos, Mexicans, African Americans, um, so that's what I was used to. Uh, I wanted to be a comic book artist when I was little, and it was cool because my father would drive me to the comic book stores, and uh, I guess it was because, yeah, I was too, I was nerdy too, I, was, I, I just wanted to pick up comics and and my grades were decent, but uh, my art was definitely uh, above uh, average. And my uh, parents were actually really good about it. My mom actually encouraged me to draw. And so um, parents-wise, it worked out. Because I think they were like, well, this is the best thing that Bobby's got going for him. So let's, let's do this. <laughs> let's let him draw. I think let's keep him, let him keep on drawing. So uh -huh. thanks, mom and dad. 
Do you guys have siblings? Are you guys the oldest, yeah. youngest? Okay. Oldest two brothers, Anthony and Ronald. Mm -hmm. And Ronald works in, uh, my brother Ronald works also in animation. So, but he goes by Ron, Ron Rubio. So, hey, oh, Ron, Ron, if you're Ron, watching. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Nice. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Ron. Uh, so, John, uh, thank you, Bobs. Um, so, John is the only one out of us that grew up in the Philippines. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I, put you I was uh, born and I grew up in the Philippines and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, when I was growing up, I actually uh, just liked to draw. Yeah, my uncles were like teaching me how to draw, and then I saw, you know, a uh, Disney cartoon, and then I really wanted to draw and stuff. But um, one of my childhood memories that I, that really stands out to me was when I was in class. It was like my my first grade class in the Philippines, and you know, I was just pen and paper, and I just started drawing and started drawing and, and the students around me were just all noisy and just really rambunctious and, and, and loud. And when the teacher came in, she got really angry at everyone. So she made all, <laughs> all the students stand beside their desk and, and not say anything as a punishment and stuff. But then she said, except for John, you know, John was quiet and he was drawing. So John, you just do what you're, you keep on doing. And you guys won't sit down until I say so. Dang. Yeah. So uh, that was my fondest memory. Uh, but since then, you know, I've, I've always liked to draw. And just like Ian and uh, Bobby Rubio, I also wanted to be a comic book artist because I grew up reading comic books and stuff. And, you know, very inspired by them, by X-Men and, you know, like Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and stuff. And Will Spertasio, man. Yes. Spertasio. <laughs> no. Yes, the Filipino. Filipino dude. <laughs> yes. He's on the call, I think. Yeah, yeah. he's, all, he's, he's a, also on the call. Here? Like every Filipino well, person is on the call. Well, well, no, what up? Hey, every, yeah. <laughs> every Filipino <laughs> better be on this call. They better I know, be. right? <laughs> well, so but finding I'm, the country. Yeah. Thank you for... <laughs> But yeah, that, that's my my experience growing up and my parents my mom I, I i grew up as you know with my mom as a single parent and stuff so uh she always encouraged me to do whatever brought me joy and stuff and you know that's why i took our classes and she always supported me in whatever i did amazing right that's awesome man that's yeah. awesome um i mean um uh, beyond john uh, you you kind of grew up there but like I, I, maybe I kind of wanted to ask so it could be a little more specific to us, but like, when was the last time that you guys visited the Philippines and what was that um, experience like for you? Yeah, what was, what was the experience, you know, that you guys had? I mean, you guys weren't born there, but you, you know, some of you, you must have visited, you know, a few times and, you know, and like Bobby said, what the experiences um, that you guys got from that trip or vacation? Uh, the last I was in the Philippines was for my sister's wedding in uh, 2011, and uh, it was in Boracay. Um, but, I mean, we also went around, you know, to, uh, we were in Manila and um, other parts, I'm blanking um, of where exactly we were. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of a, a whirlwind. I was like graduating college at the time, and, and my mind was kind of on a lot of other things. And so it was mostly just kind of focused on, on the wedding, but, um, but yeah, I feel like I can't explain that feeling of like, you know, a panel like this where it's important for people to see themselves and to see people like them. Um, I can't put words to that feeling of just kind of, I've only been there so many times. I can't put words to the feeling of, um, just looking around and like seeing myself everywhere, you know, and also the struggle of like knowing that I'm not from there and I don't speak the language and, and I wish that I did. And I wish that I was more connected to, you know, my culture in that way. But, um, yeah, I don't know without getting sappy about it. Like it's, it's, it's a very grateful feeling. I feel a lot of gratitude kind of, um, of the few times that I've been there, you know, so. Uh, Bob, what do you think? I have never been to the Philippines. What? I know. Oh, snap. It's actually really <laughs> sad. Oh, snap. <laughs> that was a live host. Oh, oh, oh. So oh, my dear. answer is pretty quick. It's like, <laughs> yeah. 
Next. I, I, that's my answer. So my answer is really quick. Yeah, I've never been, but I want to go. I want to go back and I want to visit my family. Um, I just, my parents couldn't afford it back when we were younger and it just never happened. So, um, yeah. So I don't know the experience. So. Oh, oh. I, I went back when I was maybe seven, six or seven. Um, this was in the eighties. It was like a, going to a magical world. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. Um, not only because I grew up with like a small, small ish family by Filipino standards is 25 people in your kind of family, not like we were five, but then the other different families. But then mm -hmm. when we went home, it was like, oh my goodness, it seemed like hundreds. <laughs> you know, it seemed like I was related to every, it was beautiful. Um, I remember just being like a kid. Um, I remember seeing that they were in kilometers, not in miles, and going like, "We're going seventy miles per hour!" Just, it was like, it was amazing. Um, and that was we went during Christmas time, which was oh, so fun, uh, and there for New Year's. Um, and then we went back a few more times when I was a kid, and then I didn't go back until maybe after college, so after CalArts, and then. I've been lucky enough to have Disney send me for Zootopia <laughs> and oh, it <laughs> So it's been nice. very nice on the, uh, the Disney. <laughs> the Disney done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you, Disney. Um, so it's been, I, and from when I was a kid to now, I was, I, I mean, I've been, I've just been floored by the Philippines. Um, when I went back for Zootopia, I got to visit like St. Benilde and visit different schools and visit Toon City in Mandaluyong and see like there is so much talent there and there's so many mm -hmm. different storytellers and filmmakers that I've just been so impressed and very, it makes me very, very proud. So, how are so cool. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What about you, Bobby? Have you ever, have you gone yeah. back to the Philippines? I went back last year uh, uh, for the first time in 10 years, and it, 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 it made me um, really, really, uh, uh, I, like, <clears throat> when I went back there and I landed, uh, Armand Serrano picked me up and he's like, so how do you feel, Bobby? And I was like, <laughs> that was perfect. Um, I feel very overwhelmed. I mean, like, it, it, it it's so special to, to come back to the Philippines for, you know, after like 10, 11, 12 years and um, just to land in the airport and, and see people that look like you and, and, and sort, of, sort of were there to, you know, um, kind of amplify um, uh, animation student, students over there in the Philippines and uh, it was overwhelming. Uh, but so I, I, yeah, it was really, it, it was special and uh, so kind of like, um, I think uh, something I will kind of remember forever. Um, but um, I, Bob's, um, let's go back together, man. I'll go back with you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Next year, we can probably go back. I don't care where you're from, where your family's <laughs> from. We'll go back together. We'll go back to Manila and, and just sort of like, Seek everybody out. That'd be fun, man. Bobby and Bobby. Yeah, and man. The Bobby, and, Bobby and, Bobby that's, that's a that's a show. That is uh, a show, right? <laughs> yeah. No, shout out to Armand. I think the icon. I think that's so cool. Um, I want to I want to be a part of it. Um, and yeah. I think it's so cool that he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, me too, Armand. What's up with that? What's up? Agree. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for yeah. my invitation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not here, but Armand uh, is the Tito of all of us. Armand is all of our Titos. <laughs> Armand, 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 Um, So uh, let's. That's so funny. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. He should hear it, and he should feel guilty. Just kidding, Armand. <laughs> yeah. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, Armand, we love you. you should we love you, Armand. I mean, I love that you all know Filipinos. Ooh, that could be a thing, right? Next year, an icon Manila that's all Filipinos. Anyway, just an idea, Armand. Mm. Check it. Check it. Um, but okay. uh, I, <laughs> just to get this conversation started, so like, um, for, for this is kind of, I'll throw it out to the group. Um, when uh, and how did you know you wanted to pursue animation in the beginning? And what was that path for you? I mean, everyone's path is different, but like, what was it for you? Um, I'll, I'll go mm -hmm. backwards. Like Josie, what do you, what, 
what was your, when did you decide that like, hey, this is kind of what I want to pursue instead of? I, I mean, uh, I loved Disney animation as a kid. I did not read comic books, um, I admit, but I loved all the Disney films. And so I always, I, um, I remember watching Robin Hood um, when I was a little kid and I remember we paused it, it was on VHS and it started to play frame by frame. And that's the first time I realized that those were drawings and, and, and they were beautiful. And so from then on, I fell in love with animation. And my dad actually went to, he went to UST and he happened to have a classmate who um, they, they were in Montreal together when they immigrated to, the, to North America. And this guy's son, Ted T., um, was oh, actually at, oh, yeah, Ted was going to Cal Arts, and Ted, Shout out knew, Ted. <laughs> Ted and my Ted's dad and my dad were friends at UST, and what? so it, so when Ted came out to California, we were his surrogate family, and so we would <sighs> you know like have Thanksgiving with him, and so <laughs> when we we dropped him off at Cal Arts. And that's when, like, John Rippo was going to school there, Sergio Pablos. Oh, my And goodness. it was amazing. And so I, I realized, like, this is where I want to go to school. This is, I remember seeing a drawing of Ariel from The Little Mermaid, and she had a harpoon through her body. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, these people get me. I like that. It was like, jet. it was something I just... I, I absolutely loved. And so I asked Ted, I was a freshman in high school. I said, how do I get into Cal arts? And he said, draw, you know, like take art classes and that mm. sort of thing. So then um, ever since then, like in high school and, and I took art classes, I, uh, I took Saturday high at art center. So then my parents would drive me to classes. Oh, nice. There were, I just, I mean, again, I was such a nerd. I was like, I looked up every art class opportunity, whether it was community college or in the Southern California area. And I just made sure I learned how to draw. And, and I would just do figure drawing. So I was like preparing myself to be a 2D animator. And then when I got into like animation, when I went to CalArts, um, 2D animation just decides to up and go away <laughs> and become CG. So then I was sort of, I struggled to find that first job. But um, anyway, but my parents, again, were very supportive. They would. I think they would take me to drawing classes. Um, so I, I mean, I was, it was so fortuitous yeah. that my dad and, and Ted T's father just happened to be friends. But otherwise, I don't know how I would have known. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And what's great is that even though 2D went away, you never gave up on your dream. I think that's awesome. Well, I couldn't do, I couldn't draw. <laughs> I couldn't, I was not a very good 2D animator. And that's when at CalArts, I, I decided like, oh, maybe I ought to try story. <laughs> because uh, there, were, there were so many more talented, like just naturally gifted 2D animators. And also I just did not understand the physics of animation and timing. I couldn't do the math to go like, <laughs> how many frames is five seconds? I just, but, <laughs> but, and, then uh, you, and then you just went off and became Beyonce over here. <laughs> I thought I was, but at the time, no one, no yeah. one was in the story. No did one. No was, did, did no one catch that? Josie was like, "Oh, no. I cannot do two D animation." No. So he became English. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He became English for like. A I know. It's funny the story. You do accent. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you when you do when you pitch, you do the voices and such. So. Oh, I'm yes, Josie. You just do anything you can to sell it. <laughs> yes. yes, you did. Yes, you do. Yes, you Mark do. it up, sell it. Sell that. Just keeping it real, everyone. <laughs> Bobby, what do you think? Oh, okay. So we're talking animation. How? Oh, long? yeah. First love. The question was. Um, oh no, I got what, it. What your your what? Um, made you decide to pursue animation in the beginning? Right, because it was comics at first. And I know when I was younger, um, I wasn't really into Disney animation. I was more into Japanese animation. So I loved Robotech and, and Transformers. Uh, and, um, and then I was all into that. Uh, but I wanted to be a comic book artist and I wanted to go to uh, the comic book school in New York. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And, 
and but my mom was like you're not going to new york so uh the only the other option was cal arts so uh I went to Cal Arts actually with John Rippa and <laughs> and Sergio and those guys. I, like I was like, oh I my like god! How, I like how Cal Arts is like a, Cal Arts is a backup thing for you. Like, I, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Arts. Oh wait, wait. Yeah. I mean, back then they were accepting everybody. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but like, yeah, no, I was with those guys. Those guys uh, that that Josie mentioned are, were amazing, and yes. Um, and shout out to John Ripa again, because he was my animation mentor when I was at Disney. Um, and um, it was, I fell in love with Disney animation once I got <clears throat> with CalArts and I wanted to be an animator. And uh, when I started Disney, at Disney, I was a cleanup artist and uh, I finally made traditional animator on Treasure Planet with John Ripa as my supervisor. And mm. I will be forever grateful for that. And, um, but yeah, like Josie said, after that, it died. So I was like, oh, what am I going to do now? Uh, I guess since storyboards is much like comics, let me, let me try storyboards. Mm -hmm. So I went over to a story. But I mean, uh, I definitely, if, if 2D was still around, I would be animating for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. um, so I, I, uh, my path was a little all over the place because I think that I thought I changed my mind a lot. I thought that I knew kind of what I was doing and where I was going. And I, um, cause I wanted to do comics, um, going into, I went to art center and when I was there, I was, you know, I realized that, um, you're not special if you know how to draw, like anybody can do that. And, um, and I was all of a sudden surrounded by all these people that I, I think in orientation, they said on the first day, it's like, look around, like you guys are all probably the best artists where you came from. You guys probably were the, were the drawer or whatever. And there was this kind of like collective giggle. And it was like, yeah, but now all of you are that, you know? So what, what will you do? Like, what will you do now when, when it's not just fun and a parlor trip? Like they were very like, you know, and, and, and it shut us up right away. Um, and so I was like very, I was taught like very militant. Mm. It was very competitive. Um, and I, I wanted to do um, production design because I, I, my kind of following in the footsteps of what my cousin was doing, I liked prop design. Um, and I just liked drawing things. This was before portfolios needed turnarounds and things like that in them, you know? And so I, I was kind of just drawing for fun. Um, but then it wasn't until probably a year before I graduated art center, I discovered storyboarding, um, through working with, um, some friends on a, like an animated commercial. And, uh, I did all the design for it, but they were like, can you do the boards? Cause we're kind of running out of time. And I was like, what is this? You know, what are storyboards? And I hated it. Like I hated the process. It was not intuitive at all. Um, but my first portfolio got me, um, in front of adventure time. Uh, and it got me in front of a couple of the, I, at the very first CTN I had, I had, I was speaking to those people and getting offers. And it's when my teachers at art center were straight up telling me, you know, if you don't listen to what the way I'm doing it, you will never storyboard in this industry. Um, and then I, I, I got that and it was like, Oh, you know, I, I was nervous about it because I was paying so much for this top tier education, but I had to teach myself how to storyboard because they didn't really have that. And it was like, Oh, I think I, I kind of like this. Um, so I, I think even though I knew about animation, I didn't really, it's like that story that everyone tells of like, Oh, th this is a job. You know, this is what it looks, this is what the job looks like. You can um, be an animator or, or whatever for Bugs Bunny or something like that. And so I think that was when I first made like a, decision for myself mm -hmm. of like oh this is this is what my art is and this is what I want to do with it mm -hmm. beyond like having fun um and like I had right out of school I had a chance to work with for Leica and um it, with their commercial department and also I helped out a little bit on the box trolls and that's where it separated it for me right away is that it's like I will take story notes forever because I love this like I love tearing myself down but if you ask me to do a turnaround and then ask me for notes, like I will not do that. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, I think, I think I'm more naturally suited to story because yeah. it's 
kind of like what Josie is saying. It's, it's um, I, like, I don't really see myself as a very technically proficient artist. I feel like my, my art is very specific to me, but from an industry level, it's like, oh, my ideas are transferable. You know, I think that, I think my ideas are competitive. My technique is not so much. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how I fell into story. Yeah, that's, awesome. that's really cool. Um, which brings me to my question to the panel. Um, what were the challenges that you had faced breaking into the industry and how, how did you go about, you know, overcoming them? Let's start with Josie. Uh, so when I graduated um, from CalArts, it, again, it was a, sort of a low point in, in 2D animation. Um, and I, I remember getting that first job was really the hardest. There were a lot of layoffs in the industry and uh and every and i wanted to go for story jobs but there were you had to have two to three years of experience which i was like well how can i get experience if you won't hire me it was this right. conundrum but then um and so i wait i went home i lived with my mom and dad and i i would um like i i also never got callbacks they have a thing called the job fair at Cal Arts, where you put your portfolio in the main hall and all the studios come and they look at you and then they have, they have lists on the walls um, where studios want to then interview you. And I never got a call back, maybe one. Um, like in four years, it was pretty bad. Um, and so <laughs> I, uh, I went home and I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a job. Um, and and so I, I was, I went home and I was, I remember listening to like director commentary on the DVDs um, and painting and just drawing and, uh, and just for fun for the first time in four years. Um, and then I, and my dad looked like kind of after nine months, my dad was like, I think maybe you should consider law school. <laughs> like it just oh, might damn. not work out for you. And I, I thought like, he's not wrong, you know? Oh. And so I said, okay, you know, it, it, I will consider taking the, uh, the LSAT, like when it comes up. Um, and then, and then just then my friend who, Hui Vu, who I went to CalArts with, he was, he's an amazing character designer. He worked up at Leica. Um, he had interned at Klasky Jupo, and uh, he, he was not able to take a job. So he, he, he knew I was looking for a job. And so he said, hey, you should apply for this job at Klasky Chupo Animated Commercials. Um, and so I did, and it was for to draw packaging art for the Bratz dolls. And I got it. I was like so desperate for a job. And I, when I got the job, I got, I got paid $10 for a sketch and it was like the happiest I'd ever been because I would apply to jobs all throughout town and and I would and I would have dreams where I would get a call <laughs> like they would <laughs> it's so sad they would say like I would have a dream that oh Nickelodeon called me and then I'd wake <laughs> up and go like that was just a dream that was so sad oh. and it was heartbroken <laughs> and I was really like I think it's just just not meant for me and then I got this job working for the brats and I was so thrilled <laughs> because I was getting paid to draw I like was like thank thank you <laughs> oh my god um, and from there I at least had a job but I didn't have to go to law school and then mm -hmm. um, I had my teachers at CalArts one was Mark Walton who was a story oh, artist oh, at Disney wow. Animation. Yeah. And I said, Mark, if anything, if you ever hear of a story internship, please let me know. Cause they had animation internships galore, but not story. It was, it was kind of new then. So, um, and then about three years after I graduated, he said, yes, there's a story internship at Disney Animation. You should apply. And so I gathered all those things that I was drawing like when I was at home and jobless. And I took screen grabs of my films from school. Like it was the most fake ass, excuse me, <laughs> fake nope. Bring story it, bring portfolio <laughs> I've ever made. But I looked at it at the end and I'm like, I like this. This represents me. And so I, I applied. <laughs> and thankfully, um, this was kind of before the internet. Um, there were, I don't know, maybe 80 people who applied. And so like 36 people got story tests. Um, and then I was one of them. And then um, they chose eight uh, interns. And I was mm. one. 
Yay! It wow. was that was 2004, and wow. it was a miracle. Was that ten dollars from Brett's text, or did you? Get a <laughs> oh <get> yes, a <laughs> <laughs> no, that was tax. <laughs> Sorry, I got my six dollars. <laughs> I was so happy. I no, I was thrilled to be getting paid to draw. I you uh, really? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, Bob, how about you, Bobby Rubio? Uh, a tough time in the animation industry. Yeah, well, like, what were the challenges that you, um, you know, had to you know go through? And go through? Yeah, yeah. The one of the biggest challenges was I I wanted to be an animator, a traditional animator, and it was gone. Like Josie said, it mm -hmm. was gone, and uh, and the other option was then to go to story. And like I forgot to mention this, but Jeff Ranjo was my story mentor at Disney. Ranjo, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what up, Jeff Ranjo? <laughs> That is awesome. He took me in as his intern. Uh, he taught me about storyboards, and I found it to be very much like comics. I kind of got into it in, 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 in intuitively. It, it, it worked for me, and I and I started loving story. And so, but then, like Josie said, uh, Disney laid people off, and I was one of the people that got laid off from mm -hmm. Disney. So that's for people out there um to know that like even us we've been through it like yeah i i got let go from disney and i thought my career was over like i was like mm. what am i gonna do man like there's no more animation there's story disney doesn't even want me and then my brother told me you know you should try out for the show on nickelodeon and i was like i don't want to go to nickelodeon i mean and do spongebob that's not my thing and although I love SpongeBob, but he was like, no, there's this animation, this American anime thing that you kind of like might want to be into it. And I was like, okay, I'll go check it out. And then it just happened to be uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh -huh. And and so <laughs> because of Avatar, I mean, I was at my lowest. And like, I mean, it was, I was so grateful to meet uh, Mike, uh, Michael Dante DiMartino and, and Brian Knetzko and like, to see that they were working on something that I was like, wow, I really want to be part of this. Like, it had everything that I loved. It had kung fu, it had uh, action and adventure, and like, uh, it it was amazing. It was an amazing time. But I guess I want to reiterate that it, when you think things are bad, just you know, there's always there's you know around the corner. You never know yeah. what what's coming. So um, I. I, I uh, uh, but that was one of the worst times for definitely for me. Yeah. Did you get to meet Dante Bosco? <laughs> I, did. I did. And like, uh, yeah, we went to where we would have like rap parties. And then is Dante like, in here? Is Dante is Dante's in the chat? Oh, Dante's uh, here too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is he? Everybody that I've mentioned is here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Everybody dope. that I just Manny. Dante. Oh, right. Yeah. Manny. <laughs> all here. Here. Manny. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what yeah. else are they doing tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I right, right? You oh, no. I'm here. sorry. Like, no, sorry, guys. That, that, that was a joke. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he, yeah. Everyone's looking, for, everyone's looking for Everyone's looking for him. Yeah, where's Dante? Dante? Is Dante here? <laughs> Why isn't he here? Anyway. But Ian, uh, last one ago like um sort of pursuing animation and 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 just kind mm -hmm. of like how you how you got to where you are now and i think um i was really fortunate coming out of school uh when i was in college i was like very um i tried to be as conscious uh-oh yeah. um, he tried to be as comfortable did you swear what? oh Go oh, ahead. no. You froze, froze for a little froze. bit. Ian, Ian, you froze for a little bit. Uh-oh. Yeah. Whoops. Did I freeze on the wrong word? Um, <laughs> oh, I said no, I, yes. <laughs> I, I, uh, I tried to, you know, get lunch with recruiters and, and, and talk to producers. Just try to um, be a nuisance at, at the studios um, as I was advised by uh, my teachers. Um, but I think the hardest part, coming out of school, I, I didn't have that hard of a time. It was actually, 
I, I want to say it was because of that networking that I came out of school and I, I, I had my options and those opportunities. But the real struggle was the storyboarding because I had those, I made those connections on the way to wanting to be a designer. And so there were studios and, you know, artists that wanted to work with me from that respect. But then it's like, oh, can I, sh I actually want to do storyboards, you know? And they were like, oh, well, I don't know you for this. Like, let's see how it goes. And <clears throat> I remember, I mean, if there was any struggle, it was people saying like, why, why don't you just do the design thing and then, and then get to the story thing later. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, and this is something that like I tell my students, I'm very much about like, I don't want to just get my foot in the door. And I didn't want to be seen as someone that like, I knew I, I had this passion to do this one thing. And it's like, well, can I suck it up and just try to do not so great jobs? So I'm at least seen as a story person first. I see. Um, and so I kind of had to forego that, which that was like the biggest slap in the face to my tuition. <laughs> you know, I spent all this, all this money on make on, on a design portfolio, but then it's like, uh, if I get a foot in as the designer, I don't want, I, I hear how hard it is to move around. Um, and so I kind of had to bite the bullet and, and just switch out this thick, you know, viz dev book for one storyboard that I made for myself in college, which was about like a kid that could shoot carrots out of his eyes. Um, <laughs> put it, put it on YouTube. Uh, and, and I had, a, I had CalArts people like backing me on that. Like Leo, Leo Matsuda was really, um, I, he doesn't remember, but you know, I bugged him for um, advice on, on what to do. I was basically asking him like, can I, I just want to draw like CalArts kids. Like, how do we do this? How, how do I do it? You know, as a, as an art center person, how do I draw more like yeah. you guys? Um, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so that was that was what my struggle looked like. Um, so, um, so I have a question for Josie, um, and I, I'm sure a lot of people like to know, um, you know, what was your day to day work like uh, as a super a story supervisor working on such films as Moana and Zootopia? Oh, I'm sorry, Zootopia and then Wreck-It Ralph two. Like, how was your day to day there and and how does that help you transition into being a director? Um, so I, when I became a, the head of story, a story soup, um, I think I, I was not quite aware of how hard it was going to be, how many more meetings I would yeah. be in and how much more, um, it was not like I didn't have time to board, um, which I loved to do. And it became about, um, I learned that the job was about supporting my crew, listening to them, helping them get the, best work out of them um, and then also supporting directors and writers and producers so it was this in-between state that i'd never quite understood until i was plunk right down into it and so i was very overwhelmed at first um, but then and i don't know how i survived but thankfully about halfway more than halfway through um, jim reardon came on as well jim reardon uh, he was a head of story or story soup on wally -E. He had gone to school with Andrew Stanton and Rich Moore um, at CalArts. Um, and Jim, it was, it was wonderful because I, I, you could share the load with someone and uh, it was a relief because I also had my son right at the same time. So it was like uh -huh. a new mom, a new yeah. job and very, very overwhelmed. Um, so you, you had a lot of balancing to do. Yes, know. it was horrible. <laughs> and now I feel like uh, and so I, I, so when I did a Ralph too, I was honored that Rich uh, and Phil Johnston wanted me to be their, their head of story on that. And, um, and I was, I felt like I was, I just, you know, I only wanted to, like, I always felt like as a story artist, I just wanted to do my job well. And then I never quite, you know, there's so many talent, talented people. I just wanted, I, I felt like I'd never quite was like as best as I could be <laughs> and then I became ahead of story and I, I always wanted to do like to be better and better I could only see the faults and yeah. so now as a director uh, which I'm still like I'll believe it when I see it um, <laughs> like I, I, I'm very grateful to have had that experience with Rich and, and, and Jim especially because they worked on The Simpsons and it was like getting a master class on comedy and comedic timing because as a Story Soup, now you're involved in editorial and the writing process. And so 
like I had learned to become a character animator and a story artist, but I feel like that being with them in the editorial room, I got to experience what it's like to, to be a filmmaker and, and to uh, like the, the sort of scientific nature of comedic timing. Um, and I, I just feel like I'm so blessed. And, uh, um, and now I'm, I'm very clumsily putting it together as a, as a director, but again, I'm like, well, let's just, you know, it takes a long time. So maybe in 10 years, you might see something or not. So I can't make any promises. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's very humbly put, Josie. I think that you have excelled your whole career and then you're making it up there and then story to story supervisor to director. So I'll just put it out there for everybody. Thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> but he's kind of like on a skyrocketing uh, sort of trajectory in that way. So, uh, I saw Trent Corey says, 2030. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then by 20, 2030, she's going to apply. 2050. So she's going to run for uh, president of the United States. As 90 years old. Thing to do. So that's, that's kind of like the only trajectory I can see. So um, this is the, the ultimate, like, uh, Filipino uh, sort of humble artist. But I'm telling you, Josie, everyone i i had uh, um one of our uh, production uh uh people uh and cena was like um when she found out that we we're doing a panel with you she's like i will take a bullet for josie any day <laughs> <laughs> bullet. Uh, take a bullet for so, you and i was like oh my god that's so funny um very kind but, uh uh yeah so so she's being she's being very humble but she's uh, she's sort of like get ready uh, well, I, I must say, I feel like I, I've, I'm only able to stand on the shoulders of other, like Jeff Ranjo and like Ruben Aquino. There have been, mm -hmm. thankfully, a lot of Filipinos in animation. Maybe not a lot. That's a strong word. But there's <laughs> enough so that I had someone that looked like me that I could talk to when it was tough, you know, because to survive is very hard, especially when you're all alone. And thankfully, I was not. So, and then knowing that there were, Ronnie Del Carmen was up there somewhere, and Ricky <laughs> Minerva, and, yeah. and like, and seeing these amazing people come down and talk at CalArts and such, it was like, it, 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 make, it means you can make it too. So that was, I stand on their shoulders, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, uh, so I have a question for uh, Bobby Rubio. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the genesis of your idea, um, you know, for Float, how did that come about? Okay, um, for Float, it's a story about my son. Uh, it was it was based off of my relationship with my son, and my son is on the autism spectrum, and uh, I had a difficult time with it. So, um, ten years ago, when my son was first diagnosed, my wife decided said you should draw a comic because that's what you do, and I and I drew this comic cover. And on the cover, it had this father and this son that was floating. And the tagline was the journey of a father and a special child. And um, I, I, I was trying to do the comic, but I, I couldn't touch it because emotionally I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, fast, flat, fast forward eight years. And I was like, you know what? I really got to get this story done. And I really got to tell the story because it's in me. I got to tell the story. Um, uh, I'm going to storyboard it I'm, uh, because that's what I did do. And I boarded it. And um, interesting enough, it, the characters were white. Mm. They weren't Filipino. Um, and so when I showed it around, people were like, you should, sh you should show this to, um, to uh, Lindsay Collins for the Spark Shorts program. And I was like, OK, sure. Um, I, that wasn't my point. I wasn't trying to make a spark short. I was just trying to tell my story. But um, luckily she loved it and it was perfect. She thought it was perfect for the uh, spark short program. And, um, and when I was showing her around, um, uh, the Pixar was like, you know what? You should change the characters to, to Filipino because this is your story. And I am so grateful or Pixar for doing that because like I even myself I was like really you guys want to see a Filipino character uh, and and 
I am grateful that they, they let me do it because now I've gotten so many calls and I, and, and people are saying how it's touched their lives, both Filipino and not. Um, but um, I am so grateful for that, that people are, have, it has resonated with people and that, um, and that it's interesting that Filipinos see it in a different way, but oh wow, I, I did not even notice that the, there's this glare, but um, hopefully it doesn't bother you guys. But uh, on brand. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering what was happening there. I'm like, why is he in the, behind a plastic? Oh, um, <laughs> he's being um, uh, sent off to heaven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's a light by me. <laughs> You're being blessed by God. As he's see. being called. <laughs> he goes, it's the, uh, yeah, it's the, it's the glow, man. <laughs> Tell him you're well, doing a talk. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, and 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 I'm I'm grateful for the Filipino community for uh, for coming to uh, to love and embrace float and 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 um, you know I, I am so proud that it is uh, Pixar's first Filipino characters and 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 that it's out there for people to see. So. But um, Bob's Bob's um, this beautiful man. Like, what did what did you um, what were you hoping to say about um, your experience with your son um, in that sort of relationship? I mean, that's what I was most touched by. Oh, okay. What was I trying to say? Oh, I, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I was trying to say that let's love and accept and celebrate our differences. That's what I wanted to say. And I know it, the, the floating was a metaphor. For me, it was supposed to be about autism, but it could mean other things. The metaphor could be uh, any type of difference. It could be a gender difference. It could be uh, a racial difference. It could be, I've also heard Filipinos suggest that they thought the metaphor was for uh, assimilation, that mm -hmm. like the, the boy was trying to be Filipino and the dad was like, no, 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 we, you're, you're American, you gotta do this. And he was like keeping down his Filipino-ness. And then at the end, when the dad realizes uh, he's gotta accept and love his son for who he is, he right. lets him go. And so Filipinos have said, I love it because it feels like, okay, I could be me. I don't have to assimilate. I could accept my culture for what, what, and I was like, wow, man, you saw that? I mean, I'm grateful that you saw that, but like, that it, it it truly was deep and i was like i it, again this 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 float venture has been so amazing and i and i thank all the fans out there for, for yeah. the love and support that yeah. it's gotten so thank you yeah that's great that's great uh yeah yeah, uh, yeah thank you bobby i mean i mean you know i <clears throat> I, I went to a really quick aside that will embarrass nobody but myself, but I went to a, um, a Filipino animation uh, thing once and I showed up and, uh, and someone kind of came up to me and it's like, congratulations on short, or uh, on float, uh, the oh. short. And I was like, did I get credit for this? Or should I uh, just, <laughs> because they would, you know, uh, like, no, like, I get that too, Bobby. Bobby, you like the people are like congratulations oh, on the oh, Oscar. Dude, we don't know, man. <laughs> and Bobby, like, 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 they say, hey, Bobby, I'm like huh? <laughs> <laughs> came in in Christmas, and yeah, they were just like congratulations on the short. And I'm like, ah, I can't even remember if I took credit for it. I probably took credit for it. And I probably signed um, posters of the float uh, Pixar short. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that, that's just a thing that happened. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so uh, John Aquino, uh, my guest moderator, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced when directing your short, um, oh. lighting in a bottle? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure how long it took for you guys, um, um, but like what were there some of the biggest things that you heard? Yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, just to give everyone a backstory, uh, Disney has this program called the Short Circuit Program, and it's basically anyone can submit a story, a short story, and it's, uh, you know, the selection is done by a panel of, uh, you know, directors, story artists, um, you know, uh, to see who has a great story to tell and stuff. And 
I was fortunate enough um, to be selected on the second round of Short Circuit. Um, and one of the biggest challenges that I had faced was uh, the timing, because at the time of, uh, you know, when I was supposed to start uh, production on my short, uh, you know, we had Wreck-It Ralph 2 uh, in, in production and stuff, and therefore there weren't any artists that were available. So um, when there was some downtime, you know, then, you know, ah the production manager that I was assigned to, Kristin Janovic, would actually, you know, start snagging, you know, artists as much as we could. Um, uh, another challenge that we had to go through was, you know, getting the story right, you know, and uh, my mentor was uh, the great and powerful Don Hall. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he was, uh, he was a great mentor and, you know, he, uh, you know, looked at my story and made some suggestions and stuff. And, you know, being being Don Hall, you know, he had some really life-saving suggestions on how to tell my story. And um, there were there were a few things that he did suggest that really I, you know, didn't, you know, feel like it was part of what I wanted to say. And so I had a conflict about, well, what should I do? You know, should I say, should I do what Don Hall says? Uh, you know, but I really like to stick to my vision and stuff. So uh, that challenge for me was, you know, to make a decision of, uh, you know, I honor Don Hall, you know, and he's my mentor, um, but I need to go this way because this is the story I want to say and stuff, you know. And, you know, at the completion of the short, when he saw it, he actually, you know, liked it and applauded me and stuff. So I'm like, shoo, <laughs> <Thank God. laughs> nice. um, So that was one of, th those were the challenges I had to face, like story stuff, yep. um, you know, the crew, um, you know, we were on this four months, uh, you know, going into it. Um, and yeah, at the time I, you know, my mother actually was going through some medical issues. So I had to fly back to New York. Um, and I had the wonderful Bert Klein to take over for me, uh, you know, just to make sure everything was running smoothly until I could return back. Um, oh. So when I got back, we were able to finish the, the short in record time and it was wonderful. You know, it was, you know, it, it's definitely a big highlight in my career to, to be part of, you know, the Disney canon and to be part of that short circuit program because it was really, yeah, it was really inspiring um, to be supported by the studio um, who were interested in what story I was willing to tell and, um, you know, put it out in the world there. So I have a question for you, Bobby P. <laughs> so what were the lessons that you, uh, you know, took away when you, uh, you know, were directing One Small Step? Um, um, uh, the biggest, the biggest thing, uh, that I took away from, um, for me anyway, when you start directing, it's less about you and it's more about your crew. So like, um, like, I, I mean, like I spent my whole career of like an animator or character designer and trying to, um, sort of put my, my art forward and, and my foot forward. But like when you're a director, for me anyway, I didn't care about that. Like all I cared about was how my crew was doing, the, the work that they produced, if they were feeling challenged and how they were feeling. And so when, for me, when you become a director, it's, it's kind of taking a step back. I, I, I think like you're, you're getting to the back of the line and making sure everyone's okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure, sure everyone was okay and whether they were inspired by the work they were doing, whether they're doing their best work. Um, and so that was my big takeaway from being a director on that short. I'm just kind of like, it's not about me, it's about everybody else. Um, and I just want them to be proud of the work that they're doing um, for this short film. And I want them to look back and just go, oh, um, uh, I, I, I love the work I did on that short, you know, um, but that was the biggest thing. In, in, in that case, how do you how do you balance your, you know, as a director, how do you balance your creative vision and and valuing having a vision 
while also making sure everyone kind of feels like, you know, how do you yeah. make the choice? You know, yeah. are you, I mean, to be mean, I guess, like, is there ever a place where you're like, no, it has to be like this? Um, <clears throat> no, that's a great question, man. Um, the best thing you can do is like present your vision up front mm -hmm. and then, um, and then present it in a way that's very clear and hopefully inspiring. Um, in a way that they would want to wake up every morning and sort of go after that vision. And, mm -hmm. and once they go after that vision, um, how you can um, uh, sort of like, you know, um, help them along the way there, you know. And then, you know, people always bring up new different ideas that are better than yours. And then you got to be okay with it. And you'll be like, dude, that's way better <laughs> than what I had in mind. <clears throat> And, uh, and be open to that kind of stuff. So um, I, think, um, I think a team wants to be led with like a really um, solid and secure like uh, vision up front, but um, they want to be, uh, they want to feel like they can contribute new ideas to it and you have mm -hmm. to be open to it and mm -hmm. you should be open to it. Um, the hardest part is to let go, right? To, you know, like these are, you know, artists at the top of their game and stuff yep. and you need to let go and trust that they know what they're doing yeah you know, those are mm -hmm. that's yeah right. i always say that you know it might be my story but it's our you know short you know, that we're putting for it's your artwork it's it's all of our artwork and stuff you know it's not just me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've also like for like on the short for float that like, yes, I, I, de I definitely try to be as collaborative as I can, but then there is a vision that I do, do hold on to, and I, I had it written down that what I, I had a theme that written down that I wanted to say, and I kept that as my North Star. Mm -hmm. So whenever anybody who came up to me and was like, hey, how about this? How about this? And I'd be like, yeah, but it's not really the theme mm -hmm. that I'm going for. Maybe, right. uh, so that, has always helped me. So, uh, I mean, I think if you, I definitely, you should direct and, and bring out the best in your people. And, and, and I definitely, I personally like to keep it very collaborative, but yep. I, I mean, I also want to have my vision and story up there. At the, at the end of the day, it's gonna be yours, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. yeah, you you definitely listen to, to the, the talented people that you're surrounded by, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think, Josie? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because I haven't done it. I but I know that as a, as a story soup, you know, you lean on your crew and you listen to them, you support them, try to get the best out of them, um, while also having that singular vision or helping them kind of understand the director's visions um yeah did we did we skip that one uh like i think we had but um, you the, your life your own life experiences did you, did you oh me but yeah 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 I did, uh, you know and i was just working on my <laughs> spacing out i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, 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 uh, Jesse, let question. me rephrase that for you. So, um, okay. <laughs> how do you, how do you uh, bring your own life experiences to your work, even when oh. for a big studio? Oh, that's because I was so worried. We're all talking about directing, and I'm like, I need to figure out this project of what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't do it. I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. So, I was just <laughs> writing up stuff very intensely. Um, I, well, I always, uh, when I'm boarding a sequence, it's always very like, you know, staring at the blank page is always so difficult, right? Um, but then I think about the character and I put myself in their shoes. Like that's the first thing that I do. And what would I do? How would I react? What are like things that Frank and Ollie talked about, um, about like show a character thinking, you know, or Mark Henn talked about like adding personal touches from your own family, um, from your sister, from your mother, the way they act, the way they might get upset or happy or how they show joy. So those are the little ways that, even though I'm not a great animator, I would try to, in my boarding, infuse these 
small character kind of traits. Um, yeah. And yeah. then in the story room, you know, I remember once, um, it was like, I think on Princess, the Princess and the Frog, where I was like, when, maybe when someone's upset, they, they grab their slipper, <laughs> like um, their chinella. Yeah. And like, I'm like, oh, wait, that's, um, that's a very <laughs> Filipino experience. Not everyone's <laughs> wearing chinelas, huh? Okay. <laughs> Okay, I know. No, so not that. But <laughs> like I, I realize, like I realize my audience and who you know. Anyway, yeah. but, so I try. I always tried story. Uh, not only yeah. the human experience is yeah. universal, but that also I try to sneak in very Filipino things um, here and there. <laughs> I remember. Um, remember you telling me, Jesse, too, before. And this is not Filipino, but like um, on the first record, Ralph, you were doing some writing on Penelope and her. Um, in her little cave, yes. and, and you were like, um, I'm just gonna wrap myself up like a little old homeless lady. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that that wasn't in the script that you wrote it, and then you put it in your boards. And that was because- the funniest yeah. thing in the world, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was my husband would fall asleep with candy wrappers. <laughs> 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 it was truly from, personal experience <laughs> <laughs> and then Sarah Silverman read the line it was wonderful yeah. <laughs> <I kept it. laughs> oh man yeah. Yeah, well, so I have a question for the panel um you know what what do you think is the importance of you know having all this inclusivity and uh you know diversity in you know the animation uh you know in stories and stuff what, what is the importance um, you feel um, brings it, you know, that's, you know, yeah. brought to the studio story or the stories and stuff? Mm -hmm. Let's start with uh, Bobby. Bobby P. Bobby R. Or R. Bobby R. <laughs> you said Bobby P. I, uh, yeah, I, I, said, I meant Bobby R. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, if we're talking about inclusive, I mean, I know for myself, I know for Float, I specifically, we went for a very inclusive uh, population in the, in the short because I wanted it to look like it, the, the park, I wanted it to look like what I'm used to. What, it's pretty much set in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And so I saw different colors, African-Americans, Latinos, Filipinos, and I wanted the short to be totally inclusive because that's, I believe that's where we live in right now. And I think we all should be represented. Um, and I'm, yeah, and, and, and also like, I, for the Filipino part of it, like I definitely think we need more representation because there's not a lot of stories of uh, Filipinos out there. Um, I think it, I know all of us would love to contribute and like bring, be a part of that and tell more Filipino stories. But to, I mean, to answer your question, I, I would love for there to be more inclusion, especially our culture. There's so much, there's so much in the Philippine culture that, that, that uh, has, there's so much to, to mine, you know, uh, you know, our, our rich history, our rich culture, our rich uh, uh, art and, um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, um, that will always be my goal to like try to make uh, my films at least very inclusive. And, and I know all of us will try. In, we have a platform where we can, we can say it and make more characters of color in our films. Very cool. How about you, Ian? How do you feel about yeah, you know, uh, and the importance of it in um, in you know, in animation. Um, I... oh. whoops. Oh, Ian, you froze. You froze at a good at a good uh, frame, though. You're good. You're good. Though. You're good. <laughs> okay. You're good. Are you still um, on AOL? I yeah. Did you hear it? You heard the hear the dialogue. Yeah, I heard the. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I I got a notification that my. Network is not good. Um, good I feel like, uh, I mean, I personally don't appreciate like appropriation and um, whatever, whatever that looks like, you know, I, I feel as much as 
it's nice to have the idyllic conversation of what um, diversity and all that looks like. We know kind of the darker side of why and, and the stories we've been fed of like, well, it isn't marketable this way or it isn't marketable that way, you know, um, and, and, and it goes all the way down the line, like not just culturally, but class or sex or whatever. There's all these barriers up of like, you know, um, at least in our, our industry, looking back through, you know, it's still very young, all of the reasons why people don't want to hear our story. And it's, and it's kind of like, that's what they're actually saying. But then we get all these like, you know, white characters and kind of uh, Americanizing our, our culture. And so, I mean, I, I don't really know. I feel like we're still in the, seeing the start of that, like more people of color um, telling their story, but also it's giving, it's giving room for people that like, never thought they, you know, all of us in here never thought you would have a chance to tell your story on that level. It's like, if you had to do it, you would have to find time. I, I think up until just a couple of years ago, I assumed if I was gonna, you know, do a Filipino ghost story or whatever, it would just have to be a zine that I would make with my friends, as opposed to, oh, this is actually, you know, people actually do care. And when I, you know, when I do something that's me, it's, it's, it's nice to have that come back to me, you know? Um, and I, yeah, just from a creative perspective, it's, um, the authenticity really matters. You know, I, I feel like, um, studios are always trying to look for the next thing to kind of rip, you know, they're looking for, Oh, what was successful? What's, what's the next, what's the next best way to make a, a Lego movie kind of a thing. And they don't only do that with, um, they don't only, only do that with their actors or like, or the demographic they're going for. They, they do that with the stories and it's like, Oh, well, it seems like we have all this room. You buy these properties that are about, you know, people that aren't like you. Why aren't any of those people on your team? You know, why do you strip away all of those things that you think scare your audience? You know, um, why don't you put it in the hands of someone that actually knows what it is and in the very least can respect it and, and, and put that on. I mean, um, I, uh, I, I've had only in like small freelance projects had the opportunity to work with Asian characters and it's still, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to see Disney's doing like, you know, Raya and all these other movies. But at this point I've been working for over 10 years and don't get to work with anything that looks like me. And it's, a, and, and, and that whole, we're having this conversation of like, you know, what can you bring into your, into the job? And they teach you that in school, but they don't tell you in school that when you get out there, you're, you have to, you know, muzzle yourself. You have to, you have to watch yourself, you know? I mean, the, 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 the slipper analogy is like a casual example, but the darker side of that is like, you know, the conditioning of like, people don't want to hear that. People don't want to see that. You're making them uncomfortable by being yourself. So like, try to be, you know, <laughs> um, and so anyway, uh, before I get too off on that one, I, 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 I think that I think in inclusion for the sake of like authenticity and diversity is, is enough. So I think that's great. I, I agree. And I think even in the story room, having different people, a more a diverse story room um, makes it so then you don't have to carry the weight. You know, you can just be yourself. Um, you can, everyone, you know, the blind spots will be covered. So um but it's a, it's a long, slow journey to get more um, people of color and women and Filipinos <laughs> behind the camera, uh, making these decisions, making the creative decisions about what is, you know, going to get greenlit, what, what's yay or nay. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, and also I think what, what's great, um, even just from the perspective of, of teaching, um, students now they see that they see the diversity and it's really inspiring to see people like mining themselves yep. they're not you don't have people that have like um, these diverse cultural stories to share but instead their portfolio is full of like well there was this dog that liked this other dog and and, and then and then it's like what are you you know um, and so yeah I just I, I appreciate I appreciate people kind of, you know, uh, like Bobby, 
um, Rubio. This is, as much as it's about color, it's about touching people like wherever they are. You're meeting them where they are. You know, you're not forcing them to meet you halfway. And the industry isn't forcing you to like only be half of yourself. You can be 100% true and not be afraid of like being rejected. It's actually more right now, people, people want to be as personal as possible and be seen being personal. And I think that like the, the lack of precedent in this industry is enough. When people are like, ah, well, but it's just animation. It's like, to you it is, but to me it's everything. This is our culture. You know, as much as our culture is Filipino people, I take the animation culture very seriously. You know, I, 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 I hope to see it elevated to being appreciated as a, as a, as a film uh, or, um, you know, a, a real art form. Um, and this is one way to do that is to show that you'll, you'll make, you know, the grown up decision to include um, stories of other people or something negative, you know, um, sh show something harsh, sh show that you can learn from, you can learn from, from anything as opposed to regurgitating the same, you know, I know what's going to happen because I saw the trailer. Um, so, I mean, anyway, I, 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 I feel very passionate about animation and I feel really fortunate to be talking to Filipino people talking about animation. This is like wild. Um, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. Um, um, and so we're kind of nearing the end of it. Uh, um, Ian, amazing dude. Uh, thank you for going off, going off on it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. You didn't mean it that way. <laughs> oh, I was slowly getting up on a box. I was like, I'm, oh, I need to come back. I need to come back now. When you, when you stopped, I was like, is that it? Is that all? <laughs> uh, but uh, I will kind of open it up to um, like the the crew again, um, and John included. Um, like I have this. Um, I just wanted to know, I mean, because I, I deal with this question all the time of like, what would you like to show the world about Filipino culture? Um, so Josie, if you don't mind, uh, I'll start off with you. I, uh, uh, go ahead. I, I want to show that it's beautiful and very, very unique. Awesome. And complex, you know, it's not a monolith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John? Um. For me, you know, like I, I just recently finished writing a screenplay and, you know, and I have a writing partner, uh, Eric Valdez Ulan, uh, you know, we're bringing to, you know, we're, we're writing together to uh, do a TV series um, and, you know, both projects, you know, I, I uh, intend to, you know, show cultures that are accepting and that are, you know, uh, and like, like Josie said, they're complex and that people are complex, you know, different, you know, you, you know, in my next uh, projects or, or in my writing, I'd like to show that, you know, we, we all come from, you know, it's a diverse world and, you know, and, you know, as cliche as it sounds, you know, you have to be accepting of, of those cultures that are different from you. You know, and I just want to keep going with this inclusivity and diversity uh, uh, train, if you will, um, because I think it's important now more than ever. Right. Awesome. Bob's? Um, Bob's. I, what I love about our culture is like how we are very inclusive and we are very loving. I mean, just look at this right here. We're hanging out with each other, a bunch of Filipinx creatives. And like, I want to share that. And I want to share how like, how fun we are. I mean, you know how we were laughing it up? <laughs> because it, earlier on, we're like, we can be very serious and, and we could be very, um, you know, but, you know, very serious with, in, 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 we, in our beliefs. But we also have party. We love it. <laughs> we, we love partying. We're we like, we, we love to laugh. That's true. We love to laugh. Sure. We, I just, I want to show that aspect. I mean, we're, we're cool, man. I mean, there's yeah. a lot for us to offer. It's ridiculous. It's oh, really yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Ian? Yeah, I mean, we're more than, we're more than the meme, you know? There was, there was a time in like the early 2000s or whatever, like Filipino was attached to things as a joke. Um, as just, oh, it's a funny sounding thing, you know? Um, but also I feel like, I mean, honestly, I, the, the world has a lot to learn from 
the hospitality that comes from Filipino people, mm -hmm. not just in the healthcare industry, like Filipino mm -hmm. people in general. Um, I mean, if there's anything that when people that aren't Filipino try to relate to me, you know, because I am Filipino, um, mm -hmm. will always just say the same thing. Oh, you know, I know this person and they're their family. And it's like, they took me in like I was one of their own and I've never seen that anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what everyone, you know, will say about anyone that comes in, in contact with Filipino people. Um, and yeah, I just, I feel like we're, like Bobby said, we're just, we're so happy. You know, I, 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 I challenge, I challenge other, other people to party harder than we do, you know? And I know, I know that they're coming for that smoke. So I like, put it out there. We yeah. party. We, we party. Um, yeah. Filipino joy is like, that's like something else. Right. Um, family. <laughs> it's yeah. family, man. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what about you, uh, Bobby. <laughs> Sorry, what about you? Oh, uh, I, uh, I will die trying to introduce the world to Filipino culture. I will die trying. I've done enough stuff in my career that I'm like, okay, I'll, I can do this again ten million times. But I will die trying creating something that's honestly Filipino, authentically Filipino. Uh, and uh, I, I, that, that's kind of my life goal until my grave. Uh, it, that's just sort of a thing that like, you know, I mean, kind of we get there. I'm just kind of like, I've done this, I've done that, I've yeah. done this, but like, I want to make my people proud. Um, I want to make the Philippines proud. Uh, uh, I want to, um, for them to be seen. Um, I want Filipinos to know that it's possible and to see that Filipinos are thriving in Hollywood. And I, I, I mean, it's all, it, it's not even about really me anymore. It's about my people. It's about my culture. It's about my country, you know, and uh, I, I, that's this is the biggest thing for me. I don't, I don't, I don't care about really. Well, it sounds weird to say like I don't care about me anymore because I do care care about me, but it, it's that's really not the forefront. The forefront is just kind of like everybody else in the world. Um, my well, people, don't die, Bobby. You don't need to die. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a random. I have a random. I have a if you're alive and representing. <laughs> I don't care about me. I care about my people. I care about. Um, uh, I care about. Uh, you know, far corners of Manila, um, an artist that wants to get an animation that doesn't have any resources or like access to any of that information to provide them that animate uh, that information. And, um, you know, it's not just the Philippines, it's like India, it's Egypt and everyone else. So, but um, yeah, I, I, I just, man, I, I just want to make my people proud. You know, I mean, I just want to make Philippines proud and, you know, represent. You do, them. Bobby. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Bobby. You do, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's not, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, like, it, it sounds fake, but it really is real. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's just my thing from here on out. I, I have a random question for the panel. Have any yep. of you guys ever uh, been featured on TFC? <laughs> uh, I'm sure Josie has, right? Josie? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna YouTube that. No. Yeah. I'm gonna get <laughs> stop it. Yeah. I'm so. <laughs> hey, here's a random question: Have you guys ever been to any of those like um, Filipino game shows? Like, oh my god, no. 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 I hear they're free though. I hear oh, you free. mean like Wawa wow, wow, Wee and yeah, yeah, Wawa wow, wow, Wee. 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 Get those Kenden, <laughs> get those Kenden girls. <laughs> Yo, I went once. Amazing. Oh, you did. That's amazing. Did you get on stage? No, I didn't go on stage. Uh, oh, okay. I was just in the crowd, but it's a small crowd. But yeah. it was like oh. yeah, like five years ago. Look, I I went to the Price Is Right, and you know when I was a kid <laughs> watching that thing, you think that there's like sea of people like oh. watching and stuff. That is a small room. <laughs> when are you guys um after this like crazy quarantine? When are you guys planning to go back next? Do you think, Bobby? You need to go, man. I know. I gotta go. I don't know. Someday soon, hopefully. Oh, you're going now. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He's gonna fly. <laughs> you're, you're, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, no, I would love to go back someday. Yeah. 
Yeah. What about what about um, everyone else? When are you guys thinking? I mean, actually, this year was because um, I just got married last year, and and I was gonna go to um, Korea um, to visit like where my wife was born, and then we were gonna go to the Philippines. It was gonna happen this year. <sighs> Oh, yeah. um, oh. But then, you know, COVID was like mic drop. <laughs> no. no, yeah, yeah. So I mean, as, as soon as this opens up, like we're gonna, we'll, we'll plan that again. So, okay. Or I or Icon, you know, with Armand if he's listening. Right. Uh, he better be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, John or Josie, when are you guys any any plans soon? There's Say a- when 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 the oh. restrictions when there's a vaccine. We'll probably go. Yeah, yeah. Swing by Japan on the way. <laughs> uh, I I haven't been back in the Philippines since my grandfather passed away. That was like yeah. twenty years ago. Twenty years um, ago. Yeah, twenty years ago. But um, as soon as the travel restrictions are lifted, you know, it wouldn't be bad to to visit the homeland again and you know just soak up you know. Um, some of that Filipino air, you know, I miss the food, you know, and, you know, like I said, I was born there and I grew up there, uh, came back to the U.S. and then went, went back to the Philippines, you know, and I, I miss, I think when I think of the Philippines, I think of my family, I think of my grandmother, most yep. of all. Um, so going back there would, would just be honoring my grand my, my grandmother and my grandfather and stuff yeah know. yeah yeah when you um w- i hadn't been there in 10 years beyond uh, last year like i said when you go bobs um yeah i mean it is overwhelming how uh how it feels not to get uh, cheesy but like in your heart like it, it's overwhelming like landing in um um the airport and just sort of like being in the philippines for the first time you know um for you i you should you should vlog the whole thing man i mean like i'd be interested to see what your experience is like for real for real for real because like that's oh. i mean it's a, like a documentary crew just following you Bobby. dude totally <laughs> totally totally and it, yeah it's just kind of overwhelming man i mean just kind of being there um you know they're gonna be waiting for you, Bobby. They're gonna be waiting for you at the airport. Yo, like, oh, they're gonna be waiting. Pick, Pixar's coming. They're gonna hey. say that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I've been I've been had friends talking how they came back and how it's touched their lives and how it's so meaningful uh, to go back to the motherland, you know, and, mm-hmm. and see how they live. And the, yeah, I mean, I've never experienced that, and I want to. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would. I mean, definitely. I would. I, once Rona's done. Let's let's do it. Let's let's do that. Let's have a panel there for sure. Yeah. I'm getting a message saying Pixar is going to sponsor your whole trip over there. Hey, <laughs> thanks Pixar. That's, yeah. well, that'd be awesome. My name is also Bobby Rubio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Pixar and Jolly Bees. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Once I'll have the shirt. Can we get a beer? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh yeah i'm sorry uh so it's 743 we start at six um i we want to be respectful of your time yeah so we'll just um get one more question in and i'm, I'm so sorry guys we couldn't get to your live q a but um i think the last um question would be uh what would be your advice to inspire aspiring animators who are also looking to make it in hollywood mm. and then we can we can we can call it a night. Well, I, I guess I would say that I know that, you know, I went to CalArts, but not everyone can go to these very expensive animation schools. And yeah. so I would say that there are a lot of resources online, you know, like we went to school when there were, we didn't really have the internet, you know. Um, so you can be resourceful, look online, people on Instagram. Um, you don't have to necessarily go to these traditional animation schools. There are great schools everywhere. There are online classes. There are tutorials on YouTube. Um, You know, so don't, don't necessarily think like the hour, the way that I've described is the only way. There are so many different ways. Right. Right. Um, John, what do you think? Um, Well, 
I think my advice, uh, first of all, is to never give up, right, in your dreams. Um, always, you know, it, it's, you know, it's an industry and there's a lot of people who want to be in the industry and, you know, the resources that are available to people now, please, you know, take advantage of that. Like Rise Up Animation is, you know, this is a platform that that wants to give back to to artists who never had that opportunity to um, get feedback on their work from professionals um, or even have some words of encouragement. Like, um, you know, because back when I was trying to get into the industry, you know, I tried to do everything and anything. I wanted to be a character animator. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then I was told, oh, there's too many character animators. So, you know, I went into effects uh, because they didn't have enough artists in effects. So I, I did everything that I could. Um, and like Josie, there was no internet at that time. You just had to, do, you know, network and do what what you can in order to break into the industry. Um, but there were times, there were really low times where, you know, you feel like the, the you know, the ground below you is about to give way and stuff, uh, you know, because work, you know, at that time, you know, work was really hard to to find and stuff. And thankfully, you know, with streaming and video games and, uh, you know, feature animation and TV and stuff, you know, we, you know, the, the industry has never been more busy and more robust than ever before. So, my advice is to just don't give up and just keep striving and use all the resources and tools that, that you have available to you. Thanks, son. John, that's awesome, man. Um, Bane, any last words uh, <laughs> for your... <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, I said this also in the, in the article that my advice would be to, I mean, I know it sounds corny, but uh, be yourself and trust in your your tastes because your taste is going to be different from mine from bobby's from john's from ian's from josie's uh we we all have different um ways of telling stories and trust that you can do it and you have a voice and you have a perspective um i think the times are changing i mean i i i think people want to hear your story if you're filipino uh they want to see the and in and, and, and yourself being Filipino or Indian or Black or Me Mexican, you're telling your story. We want to hear the authenticity. Just like Ian was mentioning before, you know, be authentic. Tell, tell, tell your, be in the room and, and, and tell people what it's like for real. And I, 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 I want to stress that when you put it in your portfolio, have some of the other stuff that people want to see but then put some stuff of yourself in there so to make it unique and specifically you yeah that's awesome bobs that's great yeah i guess i would say um be humble uh humility goes a long way and it's not just about playing nice and um um kind of showing face but it's also in your attitude you know be humble in your study um, be humble in what you don't know to ensure that you can go out there and get it. I think a lot of people kind of um, resort to asking like, what about me before they've even done work, you know, and people want to work with people that um, want to be better. And the only way that you can be better and the only way that you can scale growth is if you remain humble yeah, accepting that you can be better. Um, and, and on top of that, to, with Bobby, of like being true to yourself, um, I think I've been fortunate in my career that I haven't had to do anything that I didn't want to do. Um, and every time I did something, I, I always made the choice to do it. I never felt like my back was up against the wall. Um, but there were trying times where, you know, to go back to the whole you have this out to do design, why not just do it and then get to this later? It's like, well, this is what me being true to myself looks like, is like I, oh. I'm co I, coming after. Right. Oh, and, um, and I think that that just like, in the broad scheme that creates 
just fantastic work culture. I want to be around people that are like that and push themselves all the time. It pushes me to be, want to be better if I'm around people that also want to be better. So, um, yeah, be humble. <laughs> I would see, uh, I would, I'm, we, uh, me and Ian both live in Burbank and I would, I would walk into a, a Starbucks all the time and always see Ian in the corner of a Starbucks with his laptop and his pad. And I'd be like, what are you doing, man? And he's like, oh, I'm just working on some freelance, <laughs> uh, just working on stuff. And uh, he would be hustling always, always be hustling. I mean, like I would say, I mean, he would I'm never- hustling right now. <laughs> hustling right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's gonna, after this is over, he's gonna go back to- I, I've been drawing under the table this whole time. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are the best parts. Yeah, those are the best parts. No, I've seen that one before, and the bubble level, definitely. No, same vibe, same try, Bobby. Like, for real, I yeah, honestly, I, I, I look up to you, man. You're, you're, you're so bold and, and outspoken, but your opinions are, like, researched. Like, you know what you're talking about, and you admit when you don't know. It, it, you're, it's a, you're a very admirable like person to follow not only as a Filipino just as an artist in this industry like you represent like the best of us for real oh not, yeah man <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go, leave now I just wanted to say and, and unless you guys had anything um, that you wanted to uh, say before we and we do want to be respectful of your time. Um, Josie, Bobby, Ian, John, um, thank you so much. Um, I hope this was, um, I, I, uh, well, I know it was helpful for people. Um, I hope it was a great experience for you guys. Um, yeah, and, uh, I mean, like where, when else can we even touch base like this? <laughs> of like, when can uh, me, John, Josie, Bobby, and Ian just kind of touch base in any other, um, you know, sort of platform other than this. <laughs> and so um, I, 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 put, I put this together because I just oh, yeah, selfishly I wanted to um, get together with you guys and catch up. Josie, sorry. Or is that your kid? Yeah. Okay. It's sad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man, Bobby, seriously, thanks for doing this for the culture, man. Like, yes. this is for the culture. It's so awesome. Yeah. Um, thank yeah. you. I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, thank you guys for being a part of it, and uh, I love you guys, and uh, I thank you. Get a rise up, Lumina luminaries. <laughs> um, uh, uh, every everything, Josie. Good luck on everything. I mean, thank like, you. Can I, get, can holy, I, holy, I couldn't be more proud of you. Ah, thank my you, girl. Guys. My <laughs> Bobby. Thank you. Rubio, couldn't be more proud of you, Ian. <laughs> John, can I take a picture of this? <laughs> yeah. Bobby, oh, take a thing. Wait, hold on. Let me hold my phone. Right. No, my mom always does this. This is mom. Does. Okay, mom let's does. let's do Bobby's mom. <laughs> Bobby's mom. <laughs> mom thanks. Bobby's mom. John. 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 Bobby's mom. John. Bobby's mom. <laughs> do this. Do this with your fingers. <laughs> no. What are you doing? My mom. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 that was it. <laughs> you ready? You later. Got it. I think I'm going to use the one where John was looking close. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Thanks for hosting again, Bobby. And thank yeah, thanks, Bobby. Oh, really you guys were great. Yeah. Always. Take care in, in quarantine. I uh, hope you guys are staying safe. For real, where I'm at. I'm happy. And um, I hopefully I uh, will cross paths again soon in 2025. We got to have Filipino Friday, man. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, oh, oh, here we come. I'll bring the Pepsi Molo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you for your time. Bye, guys. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. And thanks to you guys for coming in. And yeah, thank you. Time, everybody. Thank you, Egypt. Thank you, <laughs> India. Thank you, thank Vallejo. You. Manila, yeah. Kabidi <laughs> City in the building. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. Kabidi City in the building. Yeah, thank you, Oakland. Thank you. They're probably like, yeah. no one's Oakland. Like, Oakland. Rich man. Is anybody from Nabo Canarina Sewer? San Diego. No? Oh, damn. Is San Diego. Diego. <laughs> is, there from is there any from Pangasinan out there? Any Pangasinan? <laughs> Come on. Um, okay.
Aí você fala, Hunger Free. Dava em loucos. Hunger Free na mão. Boom. Boom. Found them. Got them all. Batangas. 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 Vanilla and Legaspi. Bibu. Bibu, nice. I like Baguio. Baguio. <laughs> Mono. Cavite. Did you see that? Cavite. Yep, Cavite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, Quezon City. Uh, we could do this for hours. Eagle Rock. Eagle Rock. Rock. Yeah, Eagle Rock. Rock. <laughs> That's like the local Philippines. Uh, <laughs> Baguio City. Baguio. Nice. And this is so good. Auntie Paulo. <laughs> Daily City. Daily City. Daily City in the building. Alangapo. Alangapo, oh my gosh. Secret City. Secret City. Yeah, anyone, is there anyone in a Chow King right now? Is there anyone eating? Chow King? Does anyone have calamansi soda? Anyone streaming from a jelly bean? Yeah. Is anyone at a sorry sorry right now? Yeah. Oh man. See, where can we celebrate our Filipino ness like this? I know, right? This is so dope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really quick, I wanted to ask you guys before you guys get off the call. What's your um, the last Filipino food you would have before you die? What would it be? Kalabo, easy. With a side of sisig. 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 Yeah. Longanisa. Longanisa. My mom's avocado. And lechon, man. Lechon. Lechon, yes. And lupia. You can't forget lupia. Our state. Of course. Oh, I just saw um, Cebu. Lechon from Cebu. That's what we're send it. Send it to me. <laughs> That's what I want to try. I want to try lechon from Cebu. You guys got to bring me there. It's so good. <laughs> yes. You guys got to bring I saw. I saw it on Netflix. I saw that. That uh, thing, yeah, they're yeah, showing yeah. it, and I was like, oh, I got to go. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And my, I, Mine would be either, I, I, I hate to be so American, but it would be Olympia or uh, Sisig. Pork Sisig from anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right? right. Yeah, Pork Sisig from anywhere. Yeah. Mango flow. I like that. Oh, but <laughs> long and right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Barbecue. <laughs> Yeah, but or anything. Um, but so everyone's had their electric chair Filipino food. We've all declared it. Yep, it's all the same thing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> all of it, yeah. Ponset, though, too, man. You got to have it. You got to have the, right? I don't yeah. know what. Ginataan bilo bilo. Ginataan. 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 I can't hang. I can't hang with a dude. I can't do that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kare kare. I don't like peanut butter. I, I mean, I'm, what kind of Filipino? Oh, what? What, what kind of Filipino am I? What? I know, I'm, gonna, right? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave again. <laughs> <laughs> What's prank play? Is that a private party? <laughs> I like, did someone put balut? No way. There, that is, <laughs> no, that is not, that is not my last meal. What is quai quai? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a terrible Filipino. Like, what is fried quail? quail? Fried quail eggs. It says. Oh, that's good. Mm. Oh. Dang, we're getting schooled. Yeah. yeah. I think it's too close to that other word, but like I. Think, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, bangos. Oh, Beagle Express? Uh, man, this is making me hungry, guys. I know. Yeah. I know, for real. I'm just going to go fry up some spam right now. Um, <laughs> there you go. Have you guys, you know. what, is the, what is the best um, Filipino restaurant you guys have been to in LA area? LA. In LA? Okay. Yeah. There, uh, um, it's called La Rose. La Rose. LA Rose. Okay. It's like really close to the Scientology building. Oh. No, no association. Um, <laughs> it's actually really good. And you know, oh, so, so you've been there too? Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, their crispy pata is really good. 
Yeah, um, and you know, it's very eclectic, the, um, the restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, but it's really intimate too, so I like it. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there's like someone doing homework in the corner, and you could, that's, how you know it's, <laughs> that's how you know it's real. <laughs> someone sweeping in the back. Yeah, it's like, why is there a kid's table like on the floor over there? Oh, I get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, uh, in, the Bay, in, the Bay, in the Bay Area, what's your favorite? Because you're a little bit removed. Your favorite. Um, favorite I got to plead the fifth, man. Because, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no one's on the call, Bob. Just say it, man. <laughs> no, because they'll be like, why didn't you mention mine? They'll be like, oh, dude. Yeah, I'm sure people will be on the call. That Just say them all. Say all of them. There's, there's yeah. only so many. I mean, there. I love Darna's. Um, Darna's? Uh, I love uh, um, uh, three, Lucky 3-7. Three uh, uh, of course, we got like food trucks. We got senior seasick up here. We got senior seasick. Is that Dang. Mexican, like Filipino? I think that's what it is. But like, yeah, Lucky Three Seven. You said, it. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, Lumpia Company. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm looking Dang. up here and like, yeah. See, that's why. Then I gotta like start. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, um, I don't want to leave anybody out, man, because, like, yeah, yeah, there's tons of really good Filipino food up here. But what is your favorite? Shut up, shop. Mm, sounds good. Uh, but my, my family goes to, uh, we go to, uh, uh, where is it? Dar I, Dampa. My wife says Dampa, because that's where we love that, and it's, it's really good. It's a nice family place. Nice. Dampa? Dampa. Right. right on, man. Uh, <laughs> again like it's just like what ian said man for the culture i mean look at this, this yeah. Is, yeah bobby dude man you have done it's something amazing. super amazing here it's, nino's it's awesome. cafe in northridge sounds amazing i will say for yeah any place called nino's <laughs> yeah. cafe, I want to eat all there's, that. there's one here in north hollywood i have to find that oh really yeah oh, okay uh, I, I think I think I will say as much as there are great spots, these fusion Filipino restaurants. I am not about it. I am not. A, <laughs> I am not I'm about not these like this. modern. Yeah, it's 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 a, answer, right? Huh? Yeah. Well, you I go there and it's answer. like you want punsit, and then they they make it with like, you know, the wrong noodles. Mm -hmm. It's like a salad. I'm like, I want traditional Filipino. I don't want these like watered down Filipino flavors. You don't I, want fusion Filipino. No, 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 no. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want an adobo burrito. Just give it to me oh in a bowl God. of rice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm> gonna... <laughs> That's right. So in North Hollywood, it, it's called Tatams. Ooh. Oh, and it's on okay. Street and okay. stuff, you know. It's That's pretty good. That's interesting. What do you think about that, Josie, like of the Filipino, like, fuge? Like, adobo burritos? I'll eat anything. I'll eat that we I go to Arco, the market not in Glendale. Go to Nana Gloria's and and but then I've been to Lhasa, it's really good downtown. Oh, Lhasa. Mm -hmm. And then there's a um forget her name. Sorry, sorry store in the, uh -huh. what's yeah. that called? In the yeah. Grand Central Market. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. Yeah. Uh, peso. Peso is, is kind of modern, but they're good. They have really good Filipino desserts. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I interesting, say. though, that Ian, the, the whole notion of like um, uh, fusion, I mean, mm. like usually, I mean, but that's Filipino owned, right? Mamser? Like, oh. Mamser is like Filipino owned. I had like, um, like a, a few months ago, they had this like thing of, called a Mumbia burger. Overpriced. And, um, Really? Over, Lumpia Burger. I know about that. Mm. I was. You sound gross, man. Lumpia yeah. Burger. Uh, oh. Wait, so was it just Lumpia's like inside of a bun? Yeah, that's it. That oh, no. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You should, you should have gotten it. You should have gotten it just so you could drop it on the floor and find it. I, Ian, I thought it was going to be a little more clever than that. <laughs> But like when I took it, it was like literally lumpia's like fried together with like Ooh. burger buns and you just kind of eat it and you're like, okay, I guess this is a lumpia burger. 
Oh my God. <laughs> it's just a lazy, they didn't break them apart before frying them. Wow. Oh man. <laughs> like old lumpia. I mean, it wasn't false advertising. It, it was lumpia burger. And mm. I, I took it and it's just like, oh. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You know. know. Uh, but yeah. I, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, uh, you know what's interesting? Like um, back in uh, Seattle, Washington, um, we always, try to um there are always these kind of like startup like um filipino restaurants that kind of try to make their way um but um i think none of them succeeded because every filipino family felt like they can make the food better oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. right <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what i mean <laughs> like it's like i every family felt like Yo, this this is shit. I can't. <laughs> yeah. you know, so nobody supported anybody. You know, like like Aww. Chinese restaurants, they all. I mean, like uh, you know, they're uh, they're out there hustling for each other. But like, I feel like Filipino restaurants, like every family feels like this is shit. I can make this way better than what they're making now. You know. Wow. So nothing thrived. Which is that, that's that's the next talk. Have on some Filipino shop owners. Um, and have them talk about why you should go and have their lumpia because it's not a burger. It's like regular, it's regular lumpia. Uh. Uh, shit. Did, you, did you at least ask for your money back and say, hey, this isn't a lumpia burger. Look, you didn't, you didn't even take the lumpias apart. Yeah. I mean, it was a lumpia burger. Um, did it taste good? Did it taste good? Yeah. I mean, it tasted like a lumpia placed in between two buns. <laughs> Did they at least like put banana ketchup on it or something just to? Well, like, I, think it, I think it, I think it's exotic for Americans. I, so I know, like, right? Um, um, you know, for us, it's just kind of like these are lumpias between two buns, guys. But like <laughs> for everybody else in Los Feliz, they're like, ooh, dude. The way the like, way that yeah. the way that uh, BuzzFeed exploded last year when they first discovered ube, I'm like, okay. You know, and everyone's freaking out, like lining up down the down the street to get like an ube cupcake. It's like, okay, cool, hey, yeah. that's awesome. That cafe in um in Pasadena, cafe sixty nine, sixty eight. Yeah, eighty six. Eighty six. Yeah. Eighty six. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In the chat, eighty six. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't like in, in especially this year. Ube is blowing up, like in Trader J. Trader Joe's mm -hmm. has an ice yeah. ube thing. Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys yeah, know that? Cream, yum. Hey, yeah, man. I know, I know no one's talking about Max because, you know, the food's <laughs> terrible. But yeah. I, do, I do have to give props. I do have to give props to their Halo Halo because I, I'm a big fan of Halo Halo when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And theirs is actually really good. Yeah. I don't think Max is bad. Yeah, I like no. Max's. Max's yeah. is good. Max is good, right? Yeah. Josie, what do you think? Josie? I'll eat anything. I think <laughs> <laughs> Max's chicken is good, but you know. I like it. I, I take people there and, you know, they're like, what? Josie's quote of the panel. <laughs> I'll eat anything. <laughs> I like it. I don't. I want to. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Ooh, oh, oh, <laughs> oinksters! Wait, that's right. Is isn't oinks is oinkster Filipino owned? Is it? Oinksters? Or is this a different oinksters than the one that's like in Eagle Rock? Oh, oinksters! No, that's I thought that was you know. No. Is that Filipino? No, it's American. I'm like the the, oh, the chat it's is Filipino. Oh, what it's is it? owned by. It says it's yeah. Filipino owned right yeah. here. It's great. Really? I love it. It's Winks, Winksters? Yeah, mm -hmm. like, what is hey. it? Obviously, it's not up here in the Bay. What's that? Winksters. It's like they, like they do a, like pastrami and it's yeah. like, a, like sandwiches. It's very hearty, hearty food. Oh, okay. Jeez. I see. I see. I see. <laughs> and that's an Eagle Rock? I mean, it's a chain, though. There's more than one. I, the, the one at Eagle Rock is the one that I know about. Okay. But I, I actually got to get out right yeah. now. Let's do it. Um, uh, it was, right, it was awesome talking to you guys. I don't want to end it. Uh, you guys can stay. I don't want to end no, it. No, 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 no. It's fine. I think everyone, I mean, it's like eight. So we started. <laughs> this, was, this was really fun, guys. And I've never been more proud to be Filipino. For sure. Awesome to meet you guys. Hopefully we get to meet in person soon. You know? Yes.
Yeah. Thank you. We'll, we'll go to Max's. <laughs> yes, we'll get some hollow hollow. <laughs> That's okay. Jolly Bee. We'll go to Jolly Bee. <laughs> totally go. <laughs> Everybody from the Philippines that joined in, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much meeting. for supporting. Um, thank you, Philippines. Yeah. Thank you. Salamat. Salamat po. So thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, Bobby. And this was awesome. This was a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll cross paths again soon. And um, you guys stay safe and um, take care in quarantine. And and hopefully we'll see everyone again soon. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, panelists. This was amazing. Um, I couldn't be more appreciated. So um, take care, everyone. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.